Hi guys, I'm going to be introducing you to a brand new kit, the Boathouse, from the nice folks at the Interaction Hobbies. If you've been following my great layout expansion, I've got lots of room and not so many things to put on it. Now that's not actually accurate, because I have a lot of stuff to put on it, but nothing was really right. I needed something to fill this space right here. It's in the corner of my port, and I just couldn't figure out what to put there until I ran across this great new kit called Sea Biscuits Boatworks in scale. Of course, as I always do, as soon as the kit got here, I took it apart and had a look at it. They have very specific information on where the parts are to be found on this parts register. There's a veritable book of directions with this. has a lot of hints and tips and stuff like that, suggestions. Now for you rivet counters out there, you even have to build two little tiny boats, pretty much the way that you would build a real boat. So here I am all ready to go. I figured that I'm going to need a whole bunch of different colors for different kinds of aspects, so I've got everything laid out and ready to go. As you can see, different products for different parts. I don't like my kits to be old and worn out. I like them to be worn but not worn out. And of course I always use my weathering powders someplace along the line because it just turns out so good. And here I am all ready to go. Everything is set and ready. So let's get started and build this model. One of the fun aspects of this kit is he has lots of little small parts that go all over the place. Now let's talk about glue for a second. I find that Elmer's is good for a lot of different things where I'm using paper or wood. And then for other objects, I like to use the CA glue, the super glue. And I have some runny stuff and I have some thick stuff, but I always have the instant set. Now I also have this clear part cement for anything to do with windows and stuff like that. A number of different companies put this product out. It really makes a world of difference. Now you want to be really careful putting the windows in. You want to make sure you don't cover up any of the little openings because things are going to go in all those different openings. So you've got to have the window parts in just exactly right. Of course, I always have lots of handy helpers around. Now, you notice that there's paper on the back of the windows. You've got to remember to take that paper off. And then before long, you have a whole pile of parts. Things are starting to come together. Almost starting to look like something. Not quite yet. Now with the windows, they're multi-part, and when you put the windows in, you got to be really careful to get the correct window in the correct hole. There are some that are very similar size, but just a little bit different. Then, of course, you have to put the window trim on. What I find works really well is to run a little bead of glue along the edge of the window after you put it in, and then you just set the window sill on top of it. You don't glue the window until after it's already in. Here are the walls going together. A lot of the stuff is multi-layer and you got to make sure everything is just right. It also suggests to put on backing on the walls. So I did that. You can see the backing there. Make sure that it doesn't interfere with the wall next to it. The next thing you want to do, this kit comes with a number of jigs and you want to mark the base where all of the four joists are going to go in. So you got to mark them all and then it makes it easy to put the joists in place. Most people would probably build the kit from the beginning to the end. Not me, I'm such a rebel. I decided to build some of the little mini kits first. I started out with the boats. They give you all the stuff to build two different boats. They go together very much like a real boat. I've built a couple of real boats myself. And the parts are really small, so your rivet counters are really going to enjoy them. Even down to the windshield. They give you the windshield and everything. The next thing I did is I built the gantry crane to move the boats around. This is before I even started on the building yet. They give you, as I said earlier, a number of jigs so you can almost never make a mistake. And don't forget to color those ends after you cut them. Now you want to make sure everything is square and plumb. So take the extra time to make sure everything is just exactly right. That makes a big difference between an okay model and a great model. Of course you gotta work this stuff through and you gotta be careful because these parts are very fragile. And here you have the gantry and the two boats. Now I guess I need to build the building, don't I? Get on it. 
Now that we've started in the decking, you'll find that the joists, the parts that support it, are actually a little tedious to install. You want to try to make them as parallel and consistent as you can, but it doesn't always work. Now one of the things I did find is that as I was gluing them together, they started to move, move around. Now they do give you a nice jig to enable you to get all of the pieces in the right place. You got to pay attention though. Now once you get them glued, I found that I had to weight it down to let the glue dry to make sure that the deck ended up being nice and flat and consistent. Now the problem with the decking is you got to get all these pilings in place. And it required a little bit of uh, creative modeling. Once you get the pilings in place, then you got to put all the cross members on, all the supports. It takes about forever, but the more carefully you put them on, the better the model will look. Hey, it's finally time for the walls. Look at that. Now these walls are very thin and very fragile, so be careful as you're moving them around. Sometimes you got to get very creative in holding parts in place while the glue is drying. And I use pretty much anything I have laying around. Now one of the real fun parts of this kit is they give you a bunch of stuff to put inside. A bunch of bits and pieces to look like it's an active boat works. Moving right along, make sure that your pieces are up tight and close. All the tolerances while the glue's going off makes everything better. Now I probably should have put this interior wall in before I put the exterior wall in. The directions are a little vague at some places. But I was able to squeeze it in there, except, oh no, I put it in wrong. That red area, well, I have the interior wall wrong, so I'm going to have to cut that out. Now this was one of the most difficult parts for me, these little teeny tiny pieces of trim. They're really tiny, so pay attention to them. Here what we're doing is we're putting the roof supports in and all the tolerances in all of the holes, the slots, are really close so make sure everything is correct. Now I realized that I needed a dock. The dock does not come with this kit. Fortunately I have a lot of stuff on hand to build with so I whipped up a dock and here it is mostly completed. Looks like it's going to work just fine. So make sure to put yourself a dock together. Now the railing is really thin and very, very fragile. Be really careful on how you put it in. And it's kind of not specific on how it should go. I had to play with it to figure it out. Then of course the next step is the roof joist. And you want to make sure that each one of these roof joists are all the way entirely in the slots because if they're not, the subroofing that you see right here will not fit correctly. Now I found it challenging to weight down these subassemblies. And of course, don't forget about the signage. There's a whole bunch of signage that comes with it. And you can choose what you'd like to put where. And of course, one of the last things to do is to build the marine ways. This is how you get a boat up into the work area. You just drag it up those rails. And here you have the mostly complete boat works. I still have to put the roofing on, and that comes next. So roofing coming up next. All right, moving right along, it's time to put the roofing on. The directions suggest using rolled roofing, paper roofing, but I decided to put metal on. I just like the look of it better. Now this is an additional adhesive, it's hobby tack, and this stuff you better read the directions and follow it because it's really hard to work with unless you do. And then it's time to put all the extras on. This is one of my favorite parts, putting all the people and the stuff and the supplies and all the things around. Then it's time to add a little bit of weathering. I don't like to get too carried away. I don't like to make it old and worn out. I just like to make it look used and lived in. And here you have the finished product, the finished model. Came out really good. It's a wonderful product from the folks there at Interaction. I have to say that this is not a beginner model. It's a difficult model, but it certainly was a lot of fun. One of the most difficult ones I've done. It took me probably 20 hours of consistent work to put it together. And I of course always love a good story to go along with all the characters and the people that I put into these. So as you put stuff together on your model, think about what's the backstory? Why is that guy sitting on the boat there? Think about why the front of that boat's all beat up. What did he hit? And this is Old Man Billings. He's the one that started the Sea Biscuits Boat Works some 35 years ago. 
Now putting it on the layout was an easy situation. I like using foam because it's so easy to work with. You cut out a little hole for it. You add a little glue. And then before long you have a wonderful new addition to your overall scene. When you look at your scene, think about what will fit in it, where and how it will go and stuff like that. And certainly have a double helping of fun. So go have a look at the web page of the Interaction folks. I'm sure they'll have something in your scale that you'll have some fun with because I certainly enjoy them. And who knows what will be the next things. Have fun guys. Bye.